unconditional love and love at first sight. Hi guys, my name is Elena Semenek and this is my YouTube channel Psychology of Happiness. On this channel I teach people just like you how to become happier, healthier and more successful in life. Welcome! Today I would like to talk to you about two intriguing things – unconditional love and love at first sight. We will talk about the love that is praised in songs, movies and novels. Is it real or is it a myth? People can be divided into two categories – those who believe in love at first sight and those who don't. Half of people who don't, in reality, deep inside, hope that love at first sight exists, but they are just too afraid to admit it. So, there are about 75% of people who are looking for that magical, magnificent Mr. Right or Mrs. Right who can make them truly happy. Does love at first sight exist? People who are seeking unconditional love and looking for magical love at first sight often don't realize that there is no such person and there is no other half. In reality, these people are looking for the unconditional love that they did not receive in their childhood. Being adults, they have unfulfilled cravings for being accepted, approved of, loved and cared for by another person unconditionally. They want to be loved just the way they are, without judgment and without comparison. For the purpose of simplicity, in this video I will talk about a woman who is looking for unconditional love, but this concept applies to men and to the same gender couples as well. Imagine a woman, let's call her Mary. She meets Robert, he compliments her smile, he jokes and acts like a gentleman. It is their first date and Robert shows his best side as many of us do on the first day. Mary feels attracted to him. There are butterflies in her stomach. She can't stop smiling and thinking about Robert. Maybe he is the one. This thought grows in her mind so fast that shortly she thinks she is head over heels in love. If Robert is a nice guy, and he also falls in love with her, then everything is fine. But what if he finds Mary sexually attractive and just wants to have fun with her without any commitment? Sexual attraction versus unconditional love. Mary also finds Robert sexually attractive, but the problem here is that she is mistaking her sexual desire for being in love. We are human. And we're also animals. We were born with a desire of pleasure. We are driven by pleasure. For example, sweets also brings us pleasure that is difficult to reject. Sexual energy creates much stronger desire than food. As an example, people often fall in love and lose weight. People in love can forget about food. Sexual pleasure raises emotions that overwhelms everything else. So Mary is overwhelmed by her sexual feelings towards Robert. She believes that he is her Mr. Right. To her, this is love at first sight, the true unconditional love that she was looking for. Therefore, she tends to ignore many red flags. If Robert acts disrespectfully or disappears for some time, she can easily find explanation to justify his behavior. If Robert invites her on a date and at the last moment cancels it because of family emergency, Mary would believe him right away. If Robert does not reply to her text message, saying that he was busy at work all day, Mary would accept this explanation too. If Robert does not give any explanation for his bad behavior, Mary would come up with her own and keep believing that he is the one. Mary truly believes that she loves Robert. Pretty soon she would tell stories that it was love at first sight. She would love Robert unconditionally, closing her eyes to his bad behavior. 
Sexual attraction does not equal love. Mary was raised by emotionally unavailable parents or parent. Maybe her parents were nice people, but emotionally they've never connected with Mary. They did not really know what was happening inside of her. They did not ask about her feelings. They did not tell her how wonderful she is. They did not teach her to appreciate herself. So Mary does not know what love really is. This is why she mistakes her sexual attraction, her sexual desire for true love. She can say something like this, I felt it right away, just when I saw him. I've never felt it with anyone else. I have strong feelings towards this guy. This must be love. So let's talk about unconditional love versus desire to be loved. The second problem here is that Mary mistook Robert's desire to make a good impression for the belief that he is falling in love with her. Mary makes this mistake because of her life, because in her life, specifically in her childhood, she was not appreciated enough. Her parents did not give her any compliments. She was an independent girl who did not want to bother her parents with her problems. She kept her emotions inside. And as a result, all her life she was trying to prove that she is worthy. She was actually trying to prove that to herself. Here is Robert. He gave her all that she was craving for. He gave it all on their first date. Mary did not even realize how empty she was inside. A small compliment, a nice smile, a spark in Robert's eyes made her feel so good. She just could not help but fall in love with him. Just to be clear, from the first date, we can't really say if Robert is a good guy or a bad guy. Maybe he's a nice man who treats women with respect. Or maybe he's a player who knows how to act to make a woman fall in love with him. The problem here is that Mary took Robert's behavior as a green light to fall in love with him. She did not give herself enough time to know Robert for who he really is. Let's say that Robert is a nice guy. He finds Mary attractive and kind, but he does not love her. He sees that Mary wants a serious relationship. Because Robert is a gentleman, he wants to be honest with Mary and he breaks up with her. He says that it's not about her, it's just him. Mary feels sharp pain she can't believe it. All signs were there. All signs were telling her a different story. She thinks that she must said or done something wrong. She does not accept Robert's explanation. She is trying to fix things and does not want to let go of Robert. She thinks about him day and night, replaying their dates, their talks, and blaming herself for doing something wrong. Let's go back to Mary's childhood. Her dad was working a lot and always kept his emotions inside. Being a kid, Mary loved her father very much but did not receive enough attention, love and care from him. She felt rejected by her father for many years. She truly loved and still loves her father. But she did not receive the same love and admiration back. Her dad has never expressed his feelings to her. Being an adult, Mary felt in love with Robert. And now she's been rejected by the man that she loves. Yet again, at first she was rejected from her father and now she's rejected by her incredible Mr. Wright. Her childhood trauma blinded her. She fell in love because of her unfulfilled cravings for love. She fell in love after a couple of compliments and a few nice dates. Now she is devastated by the breakup. Her current feelings are so intense because the breakup subconsciously reminds her about the same pain that she experienced in her childhood for years. It will take some time until she will be able to fall in love again. And probably she will repeat the cycle again. Does unconditional love exist? 
When Mary accepts the love with Robert is a myth that she created in her own head, only then she will have a chance to find another person with whom she can create a healthy, happy relationship and experience true love. Let me explain. When Mary accepts the fact that she fell in love so quickly because of her childhood trauma, she will have a chance to break out from this detrimental cycle. Mary needs to realize that no one will ever give her the love that she did not receive in her childhood. She needs to grieve the fact that she did not have loving, supportive and caring parents. She needs to owe the responsibility of her own happiness. She is the only one who can truly care for herself, who can understand herself, accept and love herself unconditionally. When Mary learns how to love herself unconditionally, it will be no problem for her to see the difference between sexual attraction and love. She will appreciate when people compliment her but she will not take it as a love at first sight. She will not allow others to lie, disrespect or cross her boundaries. She will be able to see people for who they are without looking for excuses to justify their behavior. Self-love is the key towards a happy relationship. Self-love and self-appreciation together are the foundation for creating a healthy, loving, caring and profound relationship with another person. Only when you love yourself, you can truly love and care for somebody else. If you respect yourself, you will not fall in love with a toxic person. If you love yourself unconditionally, you are not going to be selfish. Selfishness is another sign of childhood trauma that we can talk about in another video. Let me know in the comments if I should create a video about selfish people and the true reasons behind them. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because many intriguing topics are coming up soon. And before saying goodbye, if you want to receive 7 free self-development webinars, 7 free guided meditations and 7 free healing exercises, then click the link below the video. Ask your questions in the comments and I will be happy to share my professional opinion with you. If this video was helpful, please give me a like and share it with your friends and family. I would really appreciate it. See you in my next video. Bye!